So next up, number five in our series, we're almost at the end now, is uh, Arnie Garvey, who is CEO of Rewild Earth in Zinda in Niger. So Annie, Arnie started to research perennial plants in a 225 millimeter rainfall zone in Niger in 1986. Um, and he developed a method called wild perennial polyculture that forms the basis of a sustainable economy providing income to the rural population whilst restoring the environment. So right now he is out with his team in, in their field station directing seeding because that's the time of year where they're at. So he has kindly recorded a video for us to talk about his work. And the title of his talk is Making the World Bountiful and Beautiful. Hi, I'm Arnie Garvey. And today I would like to present to you Making the World Bountiful and Beautiful, which is wild perennial polyculture in action. The rainy season has finally arrived in the Sahel region in West Africa, and I'm sitting in Zinder in the middle of Niger. People here are now very busy sowing both millet and sorghum, but some of us are direct seeding instead. This year we are testing 128 native wild perennial species through the direct seeding test. What is very different with the perennial species in contrast to annuals like sorghum and millet is that they give food all year round. This leads to food security so that if one crop fails, then after a month, you can have another crop. It also leads to distribution of your workforce, which is your family basically, so that you have something to do the whole year round instead of just working through the three month annual growing season. As a 20 year old, I was on my first Trans-Sahara traveling from London to Accra. When I came upon a dried up melon in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And I thought to myself, imagine if this could become human food, what it would mean for the people here. In 1983, I came across an article written by Norman Myers, where he states that there are 75,000 edible species in the world, yet human beings get 90% of their food from only 20 of them. He also mentioned that many of them could grow in dry zones without irrigation. This potential really hit me and has been with me ever since. This brought me to Niger, where I started my direct seeding research in 1986. And if you look at the top of this picture, that is what the field station looked like when I started in a 225 millimeter rainfall zone. And the bottom part of the picture is how it looked some years later. Seeds of trees and bushes and perennial herbs were sown directly in the ground. And on top of that, we had the bonus of natural regeneration. Didn't water any plant it was only rainfall no fertilizer pesticide etc as soon as we had results we transferred the information to the rural communities and we taught them how to direct seed and how to use these plants the wild perennial crops were the domain of the women the men owned the field, but the women could own the crops. And in that way, they got their own 
economy going as these trees grew and gave fruits. Most of these plants had been stigmatized as famine food and looked down upon. So one of the jobs were to get people to appreciate them and to heighten their status and show their uses and, and what good products one could make from them. You have so many other uses for wild perennials. The crafts, which is like an industry here. You have cosmetics and you have medicine. The wild perennial crops actually leads to a WPC economy that is worldwide. There are an abundance of species on every continent and when we harvest these crops non-destructively, then humans benefit from nature and nature benefits from humans.